In this video, we will demonstrate how Symphosoft can be used to model pulsed and CW amplification using tholium doped materials. We will list some of the benefits for using Symphosoft for simulating amplification. We will give two examples, a tholium doped pulsed amplification simulation and a CW tholium doped amplification. In the end, we will summarize Symphosoft simulation advantages and list other sources of information. Symphosoft has many benefits for simulating amplifier materials. Symphosoft easily simulates complex rare earth doped materials. With Symphosoft, you get fast, accurate answers that provide simultaneous solutions of the rate equations and propagation equations. The analysis is a complete numerical analysis with no analytical approximations. You'll be able to understand effects such as upconversion, cross relaxation, and stimulated emission and show how output amplification changes when laser or material properties change. You can add as many energy levels to the model as needed and see the results. These extra levels are easily added in the graphical user interface and the program adjusts the model automatically. Another advantage is that you can reduce or eliminate tedious and expensive trial and error experiments. You can use the Symphosoft model to determine how to optimize amplifier material performance and compare the model to experimental results. Example applications of earth doped materials include the use for laser materials and amplifier materials. So now I'll discuss why tholium is important. Tholium ions can be used in lasers and amplifiers for generating wavelengths near 2 microns. Tholium can be pumped at 790 nanometers or 1550 nanometers. We show here a energy level diagram of tholium. Um, on the left, it's showing tholium being pumped at 790 nanometers from the ground state labeled 0 uh, to an excited state labeled 3. So the states are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So you can pump at 790 nanometers and get lasing from state 1, shown here. Another way of, of using tholium is to pump at 1550 nanometers from state 0 to state 1 and then get lasing from state 1 back to the ground state. Tholium has the property that uh, cross relaxation can occur. For example, if I have two tholium ions shown on the left where I pump one from the ground state into state 3 and that ion is adjacent to another ion um, that's not been pumped, so its electron is still in the ground state. You can get energy transfer between the two ions, such that the electron in state 3 goes to state 1, and for the other ion, the electron in state 0 goes to state 1. So effectively, uh, you can pump one ion into state 3, and that results in two electrons in state 1 after energy transfer. The parameters I'm going to use for the simulations are shown here. Relaxation times range between 0.067 milliseconds and 30 milliseconds. I'm going to use a dopa concentration of a little over 8 times 10 to the 20th. To model amplification, you need two beams, a pump beam and a probe beam. Symphosoft has a multi-beam feature where you can have two or more beams uh, operating simultaneously. In this case, we have a pump beam that goes through a splitter to the sample, and we have a small probe beam, uh, which is delayed with respect to the pump, and it's reflected by the beam splitter into the sample. An example is shown here. Uh, you can set up the pump and the probe, and you can set up an arbitrary delay between the pump and the probe. For the first example of amplification, we're going to look at pulsed amplification. We're going to set up a pump beam with a diameter of 20 microns and a seed beam also with a diameter of 20 microns. Uh, note that the 20 micron uh, Gaussian beam diameter approximates a single mode waveguide solution. Both the pump and probe are directed into the sample. The time scale is shown here. For the pump, we're going to use a box shaped pulse, flat top, one millisecond long. For the uh, seed pulse, we're going to use a 100 nanosecond pulse that's delayed a little bit less than half a millisecond with respect to the center of the pump beam. In Symphosoft, um, delays are measured from center of one beam to the center of the other beam. 
We now go to the Symphosoft program for a demo. I have now opened the Symphosoft program. If you are new to Symphosoft, uh, you'll see these four panels when you open the program. The panel on the left has a list of projects. If you've never used Symphosoft before, this project list will be empty. Symphosoft comes with a list of template projects, including a Tholium pulse amplification project and a Tholium CW amplification project. There will be a list of template applications, about 20 or 30 of them. I click on applications. I can check optical amplifier, and it shows me applications that for optical amplifiers. Here's one for Tholium pulse, and here's one for Tholium CW. If I want to use a template, I click on the, the one I want, give it a name up to the top, and hit Create down at the bottom. That will create the project with all the parameters filled in so you can run the project. I'm not going to do that because I already have the projects loaded. I'm going to go Pulse Amplification, right-click it, and Open. And here is the energy level diagram for Thulium, where I'm going to pump from state 0 to state 3 uh, with a pump beam and I'm going to have a I'm going to have a seed beam which I'm going to amplify from this stimulated emission level here. If I click on ECAN, this shows me my two beams. This is the pump. I right click on it in properties. I'm going to set it to four millijoules and the pulse radial profile is going to be Gaussian. The temporal profile is a box, meaning a flat top. And the width of the box is here, one millisecond. I'm going to show you the simulation with four millijoules. Later, I'm going to show you and compare results with four millijoules and six millijoules. The seed beam is here. I right click on it to get properties. And I give it a very low energy, 0.01 nanojoule. It's a Gaussian radial profile and a Gaussian temporal profile. And in the time, though with half maximum in time, is 100 nanoseconds. The radius is 10 microns or diameter 20 microns. Here is the beam splitter that combines the two beams into the sample. Sample properties, sample thickness, 500 millimeters, material, the density of ions is 8.39 times 10 to the 20th. If I look at run configuration and outputs, I'm going to ask a program to give me six different outputs. I'm going to ask for EMF, electromagnetic field, which is a pulse shape, at three different sample positions, 0, 0.5, and 1. 0 is the sample input, 0.5 is halfway through the sample, one is the sample output. And I'm going to ask for population uh, dynamics for all the energy levels, also at three different positions, 0, 0.5, and 1. So here's my energy level diagram again. If you want to see the rate equations for the four energy levels, I can go to Diagram, Diagram Equations, and let's go from numeric to symbolic and you'll see four rate equations down here, one for each energy level. So this is what the program is going to solve. It's going to solve the rate equations, plus it's going to solve the propagation equations of light going through the sample. Now let's run the simulation. I go to Project Run Simulation. This will take a few seconds. Up to the top, you see flow diagrams. A flow diagram is showing you what happens to the pulse as it's going through the sample. And the one on the left is the pump pulse. You see the pump started out strong and it's getting depleted very rapidly. The box on the right is showing you what's happening to the probe pulse. It started out uh, small and it's getting amplified. And amplification is shown up here as the red getting wider. Simulation is about done. 
down the bottom you'll see all the plots that were made. You'll see uh, plots of pulse shape. Uh, this is a pump and this is the probe. You'll see populations, three-dimensional plots of populations for each of the energy levels at three different positions in the sample. If you look at the run summary, you'll see transmission values for the pulse. Uh, this is also the equivalent to the uh, amplification of the pulse. The amplification starts out at the input as 1. Halfway through the sample, it's 112. And at the output, it's 166. I want to examine these plots in more detail. I can go to Project Plot Creator. Explore data gives me my latest plots. I want to look at first um, EMF plots, which is a pulse shape. I'm going to move those over to the workspace. I want to look at the seed pulse, which is pulse 1, and how it's being amplified between the input and output. So that's these three plots. I want to look at the center of the pulse in row. I'm going to change row to 0. And I'm going to right click and copy that to the other two examples here. This is basically converting three dimensional plots to two dimensional plots. Now on the right, I have the time scale. And I'm going to hit plot. And this shows me my plots at the three different positions. I can also go to log scale and make a semi-log plot. And here it is. I can bring this plot up to the top and expand it by dragging it to the left. It expands it. You can see here um, the plot on a uh, log scale on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. And you can see the amplitude of the pulse at, in the blue case, that's position 0, the sample input. The orange case, it's halfway to the sample. And the green is at the sample output. You can see most of the amplification occurred in the first half of the pulse. I'm going to bring that back down. I'm going to uh, delete all these. And now I'm going to go to the population plots. And I want to look at the population of the ground state at the three different positions. So that was position 0. E0 is the ground state halfway through the sample. Here's one at the, all the way through the sample. I'm going to select all these. And I'm going to convert from 3D plots to 2D plots. Again, by making row equals 0, looking at just the center of the pulse. Right click on this, copy it to the selected grids. Time scale goes from minus 1 millisecond to plus 1 millisecond. I really want to look just at the time of from half a millisecond, change the 100 to 50. And the output, change this 100. 50. And I'm going to copy that to all the other grids. And now I'll make my plot. So here's the plot of the ground state uh, for three different positions, in sample input, halfway through, and output. Now let's do the populations of state 1. I'm going to unclick these. State 1 is E1 at the 0 position. State 1 halfway through the sample. State 1 all the way through the sample. It's three, three plots. Again, I want to look at the center of the pulse. Copy that to those. And the time scale, again, I want to look from half a millisecond, 
change the 100 to 50. I change this 100 to 50. These numbers, by the way, are in picoseconds. So I copy this to the other grids. And now I make my plot. And here's the populations of state one. State one is the state from which amplification occurs. I'm going to move these up to the top, move this one up, drag it to the left to expand it, and then state one. I'm going to bring it up to the top, drag it to the right to expand it. So this is an example where I've used four millijoule pulse for the pump pulse. I'm also going to show you results from what happens if I change that to 6 millijoules. With SimpoSoft, you can vary any of the material or device parameters and see how the changes will affect your results. The example I just ran used a pump energy of 4 millijoules, and the results are shown again on this top line. I will compare that now using a pump energy of 6 millijoules, that's shown by the results on the bottom line. Back to the top line, you'll see the total gain with four millijoule pump was 166. Most of that gain occurred in the first half of the sample between the input phase and the halfway point. The gain was about 109. The last half of the sample between the halfway point and the output, the gain or amplification was only 1.52. The reason for that can be seen over in two figures on the right. The first figure shows the population of the ground state and the second population of excited state one from which the amplification occurs. In the ground state, you see at position zero, which is the blue line, and at the sample input, the ground state is almost completely depleted. The electrons are over on the excited state 1, which is approximately fully occupied. However, looking at halfway through the sample, the orange line, you'll see that the ground state is only about a quarter depleted. In the excited state 1, the state is only about a quarter populated. So this is not enough to get very much amplification. At the sample output, station 1, essentially everything is still in the ground state and there is essentially nothing in the excited state. So you see that um, you see that from the middle to the output of the sample, there are very few electrons in excited state one, so there's very little chance for any amplification. Now we go down to the second example where I've changed the pump energy to six millijoules. Here the total gain is 10 times as much, 1,630, and the gain between the input phase and the halfway point of the sample was about 363. And the gain in the last half of the sample was about 4.49. Going over to the ground state and excited states, you'll see now that the halfway point in the sample, the ground state is about three-fourths depleted. And excited state one, uh, you'll see, is well populated. Again, for the output of the sample at position one, the output phase, very little depletion of the ground state and very little population of the excited state. At least at the halfway point of the sample, there's a lot more electrons in state one with the six millijoule pulse than with the four millijoule pulse. And this resulted in the higher gain in the last half of the sample and also a higher gain in the, in the first half of the sample. Now we'll go to the uh, second example that I want to talk about. And this is um, CW amplification. Here, again, we're having a pump and a seed pulse. Here, now we're going to make both the pump and seed pulses longer, and both of them flat topped. The pump is going to be 100 milliseconds, and the seed pulse is 50 milliseconds, and the center is delayed 25 milliseconds compared to the center of the pump. Both the 100 millisecond pump pulse and 50 millisecond seed pulse are longer 
than relaxation times in the material. So the 50 and 100 millisecond times allow the um, sample to come to equilibrium in a CW state. Now we'll go to the program demo. Going back to Symphosoft, I have now opened another project for Tholium CW amplification. In this case, again, we have a pump and a probe and a sample. The pump is now 100,000 microseconds or 100 milliseconds long. It's a temporal shape as box, radial shape as Gaussian. I'm going to have a beam energy of 25 millijoules for this example. The probe pulse is 50,000 microseconds or 50 milliseconds. Again, it's a box-shaped, flat-topped pulse. And radial profile is Gaussian. And the energy is very tiny, 0.01 nanojoules. The probe pulse is delayed 2.5 times 10 to the 10th picoseconds, which is 25 milliseconds, with respect to the pump pulse. Here's the beam combiner, and here's the sample. Go to its properties. Now, instead of being 500 millimeters long, we're going to have a sample that's 250 millimeters long. And again, we're keeping the same um, ion density, 8.39 times 10 to the 20th per cubic centimeter. Energy level diagram is the same as before. In run configuration, the output's the same as before. We're going to look at the um, pulse shapes, both the pump and probe, at position 0 0.5 and 1. And we're going to look at uh, population densities of each of the energy levels, also at the three positions 0 0.5 and 1. So now let's run the simulation. Go to Project, Run Simulation. The initial figures are shown at the bottom. At the top, you see flows showing what happens to the pump and probe pulse as it goes to the sample. The one on the left is for the pump pulse, and the one on the right is for the probe pulse. To save time, I will now jump to the end of the simulation. We're now approximately at the end of the simulation. So the simulation is over. And you'll see the, um, all the different plots down at the bottom. I can look at the run summary and see what happened in the simulation. The transmittance values are really uh, equivalent to amplification. At 0, it's 1, no amplification. Halfway through the sample, it's about 9.5. And at the sample output, it's about 40. So we had a gain of about 40 using a pump energy of 25 millijoules. Again, we can go to Plot Creator and look at all the different EMFs and population density plots and compare the results. Rather than going through it here, I'm going to go back to the presentation and go through the results of the presentation. So now I'm going to show you plots that can be generated with Plot Creator in Symphosoft. The top row is with a pump energy of 25 millijoules, which is the simulation I just ran. And the bottom row is of changing the pump to 100 millijoules and showing what happens there. So this is, again, an example of using Symphosoft to vary a parameter and see what happens. In the top row, with a pump of 25 millijoules, the total gain was 40 going to the sample. And that gain was about 9.5 for the first half of the sample and 4.2 in the last half of the sample. If you look at the populations of the ground state and excited state, you'll see that at the sample input, the ground state is fully depleted and the Excited state 1 is fully populated. It's a blue line. At halfway through the sample, 
which is the orange line. The ground state is about three-fourths depleted. And the excited state one is about three-fourths populated. And at the sample output, which is the green line, the ground state is about 40% depleted and the excited state one is about 40% populated. So you can see the populations of the different levels. You'll see that in the first part of the sample between 0 and 0.5, state one is fairly highly populated, but between 0.5 and 1, it's less populated. So there'd be less amplification in that region. Now let's compare that to having a pump of 100 millijoules. Here we see the total gain has now increased from 40 up to 619. And here we're getting about a gain of about 25.6 in the first half of the sample between the input base and the halfway point, And a similar gain of about 24.2 in the last half of the sample from 0.5 to 1. If you look at the populations of the ground and excited states, you'll see that all through the sample at positions 0, 0.5 and 1, the ground state is nearly depleted and excited state 1 is nearly populated. So we're getting high populations of excited state 1 resulting in high gain throughout the sample. So these are the two examples I wanted to demonstrate. To summarize, the photodynamics of rare earth doped amplification is very complicated and only Symphosoft can handle the resulting complexity. Symphosoft has an easy to use graphical user interface so you can set up an unlimited number of energy levels and transitions. It is easy to model effects such as upconversion, cross relaxation, stimulated emission, and amplification in rare earth doped materials. With Symphosoft, you can show how amplification changes when material or device parameters are changed. And you can visualize and interpret results with 2D and 3D plots. For additional information, go to the Symphotech website at symphotech.com. You can download application notes from the website. You may sign up for a free 30-day trial of Symphosoft. You may also view other Simpotech videos on YouTube. Thank you for your attention.